Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Simon Says Stamp. And today we are going to be making a couple of um, just softer watercolor background cards. Uh, so I'm working on Canson watercolor paper and I'm going to be using um, the Flower Cluster die from Simon Says Stamp and then the Happy Birthday and the Lucky to Know You die. So actually no stamps in this one, which is a little bit crazy for me, but when you have dies this cute, sometimes you don't need stamps. Um, so basically I just really wanted something that was kind of fun and bright and I'm going to show you all three backgrounds-ish, um, but this one specifically. Okay, so you can see I'm working with a lot of different colors here. I'm very apprehensive about how those colors are gonna mix together. And so I started very tentatively. I'm doing a, a wet on dry technique here. So I have a lot more control because I was worried about my colors mixing and making mud. And um, so I started with the, the peacock feathers, worked out to the twisted citron, um, then the squeezed lemonade, then the carved pumpkin, and then I'm going to bring in the um, picked raspberry. And so I don't want the, the pink and the green to make mud. I don't want the, um, the orange and the uh, peacock feathers. And basically what ended up happening was, because I was trying to be so controlled with it, I didn't like anything about this background. I was like, this is hideous what is going on here? And so instead, I just basically I re-wet it because these areas were drying. I wasn't using a lot of moisture. I'm using a number eight round brush, by the way. And so what I ended up doing was just re-wetting it and letting it do whatever it wanted to do. Um, and so I guess kind of like the moral of the story with the background with this one is um, don't we, especially with watercolor, I especially with watercolor, um, don't feel the need to control it. The beauty of watercolor is putting the pigment down and letting the water do its thing. And so if you try to control it um, too much, like I did here, and, and I was, I was just trying to make sure it wasn't going to be muddy or ugly or what, I, and I ended up making it ugly. I was like, don't be ugly. I don't want it to be ugly. What have I created here? Um, so just kind of go for it just go for it. It's just paper. If the background ends up being something that you don't love, um, then paint over it. Get a new piece of paper. Like it's, it's fine. It's, um, don't be afraid to experiment with it. Um, so I like things a little bit more messy. I kind of like when my colors get in there and make friends with each other. And so I am doing some spatters of each of the colors. Um, just so I have a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, that's, I guess a different mixing because it's just like a droplet of it. Um, it mixes differently with what's on there. Um, and th those spatters will only stay intact if you have a wet background, but not just like sopping where it's bubbling up. And then I'm also going to put in some perfect pearls. And usually I do my perfect pearls after my background is dry um, because I don't want the whole piece to be shimmery. But if you put it in while it's wet, like I did there, um, they will expand out and then there will be more shimmer. Um, so it won't necessarily be little specific dots of it. It'll just be kind of an all over shimmer look, which can be super pretty. So for this background, um, I decided to do wet on wet. So I wet the area that I wanted first and then I'm dropping in um, color wherever I want it. And I'm not being particular. I learned from the last piece not to worry about things making mud to just go for it. And um, here's the thing though, like see how little color I have on, on my, my craft mat. I needed to, to basically like re-ink. I needed um, to smush them down again and get some more color because the colors that I were, uh, was putting down was too light for me. Um, all watercolors kind of dry back. Um, even these are distressed oxides, but even those, um, they aren't as vibrant or as rich after they've dried. Um, so I always like to go in and add even more color. I just like, I just like bright colors. There's no excuse for it. I just do. Um, and so here I wanted it to be more of a piece that was kind of um, down into the right. I didn't want the hard edges on the outside though. So I'm going in um, with just some like clean water. Some of the edges were pretty manufactured. So I'm kind of trying to make them a little bit more organic by pulling them out with my paintbrush. 
Um, but then I'm going to go in with some clean water and I'm going to put that down a little farther out than the pigment I already have down. And then I will take the clean water to the area that already has pigment in it. So it kind of flows a little nicer and doesn't have such hard edges when it dries. For this one, I'm going to let this dry just like it is um, once I'm done adding all of the color that I want. And I'm going to use the Perfect Pearls on it, but I'm going to use the Perfect Pearls after they are dry. Um, after they are dry, after the background is dry. So that way um, they don't really spread out as much. The last and final thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I pulled out the dye and you can see I have the packaging laying over there so I can see what's a flower, what's a leaf. And I'm going to put my color down on my watercolor paper um, because I want to die cut these out. I actually want these ones to be colored. So I'm trying to make sure that I pay attention to those areas. You could absolutely do this abstract and just paint a background like we did with the first one and then cut your um, your flowers out of it and it would totally be fine. I was trying to go for something a little bit more specific. Um, but... Uh, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, it'll still be, it will be pretty because the colors are pretty regardless of the way that that looks. Um, but just if you want to do it this way, I would definitely recommend pulling that packaging out and looking to see kind of what's white and then periodically checking with the dye to make sure that, um, you're, you have enough, um, paint down, uh, so that your, uh, your whole die cut is going to cut out in color. This one was kind of like an, originally I was going to do two cards. That was the game plan, was to do two cards. And um, this one I was going to put on top of one of those backgrounds. That's not what ended up happening. And um, that's okay. Like, you be adaptable when you're card making. Just, we'll be adaptable in life, period, people. Like, that it will serve you well to just go with the flow. So here I have everything is dry. I have my dyes. I'm going to hold that in place with some washi tape and I'm going to run it through my uh, Big Shot. When I do this, um, I'm going to cut the other ones out of white. That's what I'm doing here. Just pulling out that happy birthday and the lucky to know you set. But when I ran the, flo the floral, wait, flower cluster, flower cluster. Yeah, I can't even remember names of things. Um, when I ran that through, all of my areas stayed in my dye. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be fun if I could just make them stay that way? And so I pulled out some um, double-sided tape and I'm going to completely cover that die up. Um, every every little part of it, I'm going to completely cover with the, um, the double-sided tape. And I'm basically going to, I don't have a Xyron and I don't think that it would work even if I did because the Xyron makes the sticker and I don't want it to cover up my die. Um, but I will tell you when you do this portion of it, cut off all of the excess that you can. Run it back through your die cutting machine because the die cutting machine will not cut through that backing paper, but it will cut through the actual adhesive. So you can go in and just, it. I did have to play with it a little bit, not a huge deal, um, and just kind of peel that off. And then it leaves the die, like the paper in there for the most part. I had this one little puddle. You know, there's always one, one in every family. This one little petal that did come out um, and I had a couple of little leaf pieces that did. They were actually stuck to my fingers and that was from me handling the dye. I um, was trying to put them back in and then I realized that that was just, it was a bad plan. So I actually set them off to the side of my desk and then um, put them back in, like piece them back in like a puzzle. So here I'm just, I just put the die down. It's got the, you know, the, the uh, adhesive on the back of it. I just put it down on my paper. Sorry about the cutting off. I got so excited about it. I actually like leaned over right in front of it. And so all you saw was the back of my head. Once these were down, I really wanted to do a white border to help kind of make them stand out um, because everything was the same color. And I ended up cutting that out of the Simon Says Stamp white glitter paper. I love that stuff. It's so good. Um, I love, I love neutral glitter. You guys know that. I use Stardust Stickles. I use Clear Wink Estella. Um, and this white glitter paper is just an amazing addition to that. So I cut it out of the, the outline out of the white glitter paper because love me the glitter. 
love me the glitter. And um, I'm going to put that over that, um, over the die cut that's already there. And so it gives that some shape and some separation just by doing that. Once um, that was done, I did go through and I just die cut, I mean, forever. People, I was die cutting for ages, but totally worth it because I wanted each one of these to be a thicker piece. So what I ended up doing was cutting four, um, four, yes, four. So three were just plain white. One was the glitter paper on top of these flower clusters which I totally love this design. The Simon Says Stamp has a stamp set that is the um, a similar design. It has like an inset one and then an out um, an outside one, almost like a square wreath. Um, and that's just beautiful. And I haven't had a chance to use that yet, but it is definitely in my to use pile. Tell me you have a to use pile. Like, please say I'm not the only one who buys beautiful stamps and then doesn't always get around to using them. Um, so basically, I'm just going to build these up to all be chipboard pieces. I did use some gray cardstock. I believe it's the Simon um, slate color. And then I'm going to start building the cards uh, together. So this one I decided was going to be a um, horizontal instead of a vertical. And I really just love um, like how the background can kind of be the focal point with all the color and everything else is neutral, but still super pretty like that glitter paper guys oh that glitter paper is life right now I totally love it um I, but I I just like anything glitter my sisters um my sisters my best friend and I are in a, in a snapchat group where we talk all the time and the other day I had on glitter eyeshadow um like I mean like right out of high school going to those Friday night football games glitter eyeshadow I am a woman in her 30s and I am unashamed Back to this card for one second. So this one, I actually glued the flower piece down and then I went to put the uh, Lucky to Know You um, dies. And these are the same thing. They're all built up, so they're super thick. And um, I went to put it over there and I realized that it would not fit. So that was my bad. I didn't pre-plan. And so I ended up having to try to re remove this. I shouldn't say try. I did actually remove it, but it was not pretty. It wasn't pretty. It was not a cute look. And so you can see as I'm peeling it off, um, I do have some areas where the paper ripped, like the paper off the back of the, the die cut ripped. And I'm just going to go in with a white eraser to get rid of that. Make sure you wait until it's dry. I got like excited about it and started trying to erase it while it was wet. And I did tear the paper some, um, but it wasn't anything that was too terribly noticeable, especially with all the die cuts I was putting on top of it. So now this time I've pre-planned. I've laid everything out. Please do that. Don't don't do what I did because that's a pain. It's such a pain. So now I'm adhering it to the bottom right hand corner, and then I'll go through and um, put down the uh, the actual sentiment because I know where everything's going to go. One note on this one is the in the phrase "lucky to know you." The two know is actually connected, and here I cut them apart. I cut them apart so that I could um, restack it, basically realign my sentiment and so that everything that would fit very nicely on my card front. So don't be afraid to modify what you need to in order to make that work. I love the die the way it is. And for the third card, I used it the way that it comes. Um, but for this one, because I had a, a little bit of a different design idea, um, I just trimmed out the piece that connected them and that's going to work super well for me. So just, you know, going through and putting those down where all of the pieces parts need to go. Um, I love the sentiment. I totally love the sentiment. I think that um, oftentimes in life, um, we think about how lucky we are to have certain friends or to have, you know, blessed to have these people in our lives. And we never, it never once occurs to us that, um, people are lucky to know us too. They are. And like, everybody has redeeming qualities and you have something that is unique and beautiful and, uh, that is just wonderful and it's you. It's just unique to you. And so when you're when you're going about your daily life, and I know a lot of times people have um, this negative voice that that talks to them and says n not nice things um, and makes you 
self-conscious or makes you um, second guess yourself or overthink, um, when that little voice crops up, um, just tell, just tell it, well, first tell it that I said to shut it. Um, but then tell it that, um, that people are lucky to know you because they are. And I feel, um, very blessed for the opportunities that I have in the craft industry because crafters are some of the best people that I've ever met. So thank you, um, for the interaction that I get to share with you. So anywho, back to this card, um, I used a little template is what I did for that one. And then the only, the last thing that I did for any of these was just add some um, clear sequins. I like to put mine down with Tombow Mono Multi Glue and then I fill in the tops with some glossy accents because that works for me. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you'll try something you saw here and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.